Hi, I'm Tron. And I'm Kim. Welcome to Rejoice Essential Network Podcast, where we interview anointed men and women in the body of Christ. Grab your pen, grab your paper, get ready to receive. So welcome everybody to today's podcast. Today, my co-host is not here, but I do have a special guest who is Prophetess Stephanie Ham, and she's a part of my ministry. And she also is one of the co-authors for the book Collaboration, I Almost Died. Prophetess Stephanie, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine. Good. Amen. So your testimony is so powerful. Like, I know people, when they read it, they are going to be so blessed. Matter of fact, you had several testimonies. And I'm like, wow, this woman is a walking miracle. I'm like, my God. So I want to ask you about just domestic violence. And I know you talked about, you know, you were with a stripper, you know. And one day you heard something crazy and, you know, y'all got into it. Just tell us a little bit about that and how did you almost die from that experience? Uh. Wow, where where do I actually start? It's just so much that um I went through during that time when I was dating the stripper. And that was uh when we were together I um oh, when we were together, you know, we, we fought a lot and um he wind up um, stealing from me. He broke into my home. It was just a relationship that should have never happened. And um, on that very night, I um, I was in the house sleeping, and I woke up to hearing some noise. And when I went into the living room, I um, he was in a room with somebody else. And so when I seeing what was going on, you know, we started to have an altercation and everything. So let me backtrack. So he was like having sex with someone else? Yes, ma'am, he was. Jesus, that's that's tough, you know, like, yeah, that's the ultimate disrespect. Yes, ma'am, and, and when I woke up seeing that, I, um, you know, we got into an altercation, was arguing about it. And he was still in denial about it. <laughs> Even though he was caught, he was still denying the fact that he, he did it. Jesus. And to help get the woman out of the house, what he did, he put a knife to my throat. Wow. And was going to slice my throat. And the, ner- the neighbor heard all the commotion that was going on, and she called the cops. And when she called the cops... um. He was no longer there. He left. Wow. So and, God allowed me to escape death. Yes. Um, by a, a, a mad stripper. <laughs> yes. That's, that's crazy because, you know, like so many people, you know, they have passed away. They, like they're, they're the person they're in a relationship with, they had killed them and, um, and they don't get another chance. But God bless you with another chance. And that is so powerful. And matter of fact, your, your testimony kind of remind me of my testimony slightly in the book where uh, this guy was dating. He was crazy. He chased me around Fayetteville with a gun. So it's just like, God, I thank you, Lord. We are walking miracles like me and you. So <laughs> that. Yes, Lord. To God be the glory. You yeah. know, this is, uh, I'm glad that God is allowing us to tell our testimony and not be afraid to open up and, and, uh, let the world know what God has allowed us to escape for from, because this is truly a blessing, you know, of, of people that read the book or hear the, um, the podcast and, and, and they get a sense of, um, hope. Yes. Hope not to want to commit suicide, hope to keep on fighting for their life and getting away from an abused relationship. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And I know you had a lot of warning signs 
and you talk about that in your testimony and many people just ignore the warning signs and how did you get free like you know how did you overcome getting past all those warning signs and getting out that relationship oh my um well actually the warning signs that i did receive first of all when i was dating the stripper i was i was not saved i did not know god as my lord and personal savior as i do now so the the signs that i was getting i was ignoring those signs you know, because I still wanted to be in a relationship, even though he robbed me, even though he put a knife to my neck and wanted to kill me, even though we were fighting and having all these altercations, I still wanted to be with him. And I was so, um, I was so lost to the fact where as, you know, I wind up going to see a psychic. And when I went to the psychic, you know, they tell you to put the money in the Bible. And, and I put, I remember putting $100 in the Bible when I went to the psychic. And when I went to the psychic, I was like, well, you have to help me save this relationship. What is this relationship um, going to be like for me in the future? And when I went to the psychic and she told me, oh, y'all going to be okay. Just take this potion here. And, and put it in your water and, um, you know, you bathe with it and then it would make him want you more. Well, we all know that the devil is a liar. Yes. And I thank God that that what I experienced, it, it, it opened up my eyes. That opened up my eyes because when I was putting it in the water, it kept giving me cramps in my stomach Jesus. and even though I wasn't saved I was uh, I, I, I recall going into this dark room while she was praying for me and I sensed a presence of strong um, demonic forces and I didn't understand wow. what I was getting myself into by me wanting to be with this man so badly and um, I remember my grandmother used to always say pray call on the name of Jesus. And when I was home after taking a bath and having those cramps, you know, I began to pray and call on God and ask God to help me. And and even when I was asking God to help me, you know, you got to remember that I was not saved. Right. Even when I was asking God to help me, I was only asking God to help me so that this man would be in my life. Jesus. Not to take him away. Because I thought that when you were in a relationship, even when a man beats you or does these things to you, it was normal because I grew up seeing that. Yes. Wow. You, and you know what? A lot of women can relate because a lot of women are, you know, they're going through that now. They see the red flags. They feel like if he beat me, he loved me. If he cheated on me, he loved me or something crazy yeah. like that. And they yeah. don't know their self-worth. They don't know their value. They don't know that God has something better in store for them. And they're like getting desperate. And um, I, I had a coworker. She went to a psychic years ago. And the thing about going to psychics is that they'll do stuff where you keep coming back and keep giving them all your money, you know. And like you right. said, you put that potion in your water, bath water, and you start getting cramps. Well, one of my coworkers, the psychic said, here, take an egg out your refrigerator. She prayed over the egg. Go home and crack it. Then she cracked it and a snake came out. Then she was scared. Oh she hated God. snakes. She went back to the psychic, spent more money, and it, she was getting deeper, deeper in debt. You know, so that's that's the trick of the enemy, you know, just trying to keep you in bondage. But like you said, your grandmother taught you to call on Jesus. So you, you're right, uh, prophetess. We have to call on Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Yeah, so you know, it, it, go ahead. I'm go sorry. Ahead. I'm sorry. No, you go ahead. It was it was a life changing experience, you know, because um, after that relationship ended, I began to seek God still, you know, and um, even when I seek, seek was seeking Him, it's like it is so many um, stumbling blocks, so many different, you know. I it was like, you know, it was never a straight path. It was always like to the right, to the left. Oh, you hear you have the Muslims trying to get me. 
Yeah, you have the black yes. Jews trying to get me, but never too much of the Christians reaching out to me. My God. And so, and so, you know, even though my aunt was saved, and me and my aunt began to talk about the Bible, but it was more like bickering, um, you know, trying to prove who God is better. Um, and so, and so, I never really grabbed hold on who God really was until after I after that relationship with, with us, being in love with a stripper, I was in love with um a black Jew. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and, and even though we studied the Bible, we read the Bible, and I became even more aware of self awareness as far as how to dress and not to be so promiscuous and you know and so on and so forth. But but it took me leaving New York City in 2000, yeah, the year 2000 is when I moved to um, Blenheim, South Carolina, and I stayed with my aunt out there in Blenheim, South Carolina. And um, she was, like I said, was still pushing the Bible on me and talking to me about the Bible. But her approach was a little bit different because now... I kind of had some knowledge of the Bible. Yes. You know, with studying the Word and what the Word of God was saying, or how a woman is supposed to be modest, and how a woman is supposed to carry herself and seek the Lord. And um, so when I, when she brought me to her church, which was called St. Michael's Hope Ministry, the pastor is Apostle Michael Woodham and Prophetess Sharon Woodham. I never forget that day when I went to that church. Here it is. I'm sitting in the back of the church as a black Jew, a Hebrew Israelite woman. And um, I see the, the pastor, his eyes getting all big, and he's not knowing that that was the Holy Spirit on him. So I'm sitting in the church experiencing something I never experienced before in my life. And that was being in the presence of the Holy Ghost. And I'm sitting in the back with the Bible up over my face, laughing, because this apostle is jumping over chairs, stepping over chairs. And for someone that's never been in church like that or been saved, you know, you, you don't understand right. the power of the Holy <laughs> Ghost. It's like, what is wrong with him? What is this? Right. this what is this he doing? And one day, i would never forget that day sitting in the back of the church I can no longer keep the Bible up and laugh at him anymore the Bible would begin to come down and I began to listen and hear the words that he was preaching because what he was preaching was delivering my soul and set me free Amen. from every demonic forces that had tried to claim hold of my life you know we don't realize that if we're not in God we are attacked by these demonic forces. Amen. There's Amen. so many demonic forces that, that's after your soul when you don't know Christ, when you don't know Him as your Lord and Savior. Yes. You're bound to do anything. You're bound to be caught up and do suicide. Yes. You're bound to be caught up and commit murder, adultery, all these things that God speaks about in the Bible for us not to do. Yes. When you don't know Him, you are subject to allowing your... your, your um your spirit to come into that type of, um, you know, uh, bond yeah, that type yes. of bondage. Thank you. And I, I want you to go ahead and I want you to transition and briefly pray for the listeners that may be dealing with the same thing you got delivered from. And, uh, maybe they're in some other religions and things like that. Just pray briefly for the listeners. Yes. Father God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus, saying thank you for being Lord. Thank you for creation of life. Thank you that you are our Abba, that we can come unto you and pray and speak your face and know that you hear our cries. Now, Father God, I step up in the oracle as your daughter of Christ, exercising my birthrights. And I am crying out, Father God, for those that don't know you as a Lord and personal 
Savior, uh-huh. that this day, this very day, that they will begin to choose you, that this very day that they will hear a word that would encourage and change their life so that they will be saved and pulled out of bondage. Yes. Father God, I know you're able to do all things. I know you're able, God. This is why we come unto you, God, for your words that ask anything of me. And you will give us the desire of our heart. This is your word in Psalms 2. That if you ask because we are your children, you will decree a matter and watch it unfold and come alive. And lives will be transformed. So, God, we're thanking you now, God. Thank you now in existence that when people hear this podcast, oh, God, that their lives will be changed and they will be yes, set God. free. The spirit of suicide will be broken and, and demolished from off of their life. In the name of Jesus, the spirit. Every generation of curse will be broken, God. And we thank you now that they will denounce Every demonic force that's been upon their life, that's been in their family, that's been controlling them, that they did not know from the beginning of ages, oh God. Yes. So we're praying right now that the generational curses from the beginning of Adam and Eve until the present time be broken. And they be mm-hmm. loosed by the power of God. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And thank you so much, woman of God. Please tell our listeners how they can connect with you in your ministry. Okay. Um, I am Stephanie Ham, Prophetess Stephanie Ham. You can reach me on uh, Facebook. And um, yeah, you can reach me on Facebook. That would be a perfect way to, to reach out to me. Amen. Amen. So thank you, everybody, for listening today. Remember, please get the book to get all of Prophetess Stephanie's testimony because we haven't even scratched the surface of all of her powerful testimonies that are in the book. So please make sure you get the book, I Almost Died. You can get it at all major retailers. Until next time, we'll see you on the next podcast.